All right, so on our final problem here, we have cosine of x minus cosine of x divided by 1 minus tangent of x equals sine of x, cosine of x, divided by sine of x minus cosine of x. So we want to verify this identity. And this looks pretty crazy looking at saying, hey, this left side is equal to the right side. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to find a way to somehow verify that, yes, indeed, these two sides are equal to one another. So again, by following our guidelines, we just want to stay on one side. Let's just pick one side to start off with and just work on one side to simplify it. All right? Now, we usually like to say, you know, find the most complicated side. And like I said, that can be a very arbitrary um, decision on your mistake, on your part, on which one is going to be the more complicated. When looking at this, I see that this is written out in two terms, and this is written as one term. I usually like to combine my two terms, so therefore it's written out as one term, and then see what I can do after that. So in my recommendation, I'm going to work on the left side. And let's just see how far we get with working on the left side and see if we need to do any, anything further. So if I was going to work on the left side, um, I could rewrite this as over 1. And therefore, that would tell me that I would need to add them, right? The next thing is to apply my operations. So it's asking me to subtract these two terms. So let's go and subtract, right? So what I'll do to subtract is I need to get the same denominator. So I'm going to multiply by 1 minus tangent of x on the bottom and the top. OK, so therefore, what I'll have then is um, 1 minus tangent of x cosine of x minus, actually, let's distribute that. So if I distribute it properly, I'll have cosine of x minus tangent of x cosine of x minus cosine of x, all divided by 1 minus tangent of x. And we, of course, want that to equal sine of x minus cosine of x, right? OK. Um, well, the important thing is we notice that cosine of x minus cosine of x just goes down to 0, right? So that's kind of nice. Um, and then what, so now I have is a negative tangent of x cosine of x divided by 1 minus tangent of x. Now this is where it's going to get a little confusing. So we're, we're almost there. We kind of have something pretty similar, right? We have two terms multiplied up top, and then we have two functions subtracted on the bottom. Over here, we have two terms multiplied up top, and we have two terms that are being subtracted on the bottom. The only problem is they're not the same, right? They're not the same terms being subtracted um, or even multiplied. So what I want to do is maybe see, well, what could I maybe do to get them to be the same terms? On the bottom, I need to subtract sine of x minus cosine of x. All right? right now, I have 1 minus tangent of x. And up top, I have tangent times cosine. Um, I want to see, well, maybe what could I do to multiply that, um, multiply that back out? So one thing I notice is let's convert things to sines and cosines and see what's going to happen, all right? Because I'm kind of stuck right now. I don't know of any fundamental identity I can use. Um, so let's go ahead and let's, um, let's go and use our fun or uh, convert everything to sines and cosines and see what's going to happen. So I'll convert to sines and cosines. Therefore, I get negative sine of x over cosine of x times cosine of x divided by 1 minus um, sine of x over cosine of x. Well, when writing it like this, we notice that my cosine of x are now going to divide out to 1, right? So now I don't even have a cosine up top. And therefore, what I also notice is um, I now need to multiply. If I need, I need to get this multiplied by cosine. Well, since it's a fraction, if I take a cosine, and as long as I multiply it on the top and the bottom, cosine of x times cosine of x, my fraction is going to be the same. So what I'm going to decide to do is how about I multiply the top and the bottom of my fraction by cosine of x. You can do that. It's like taking 2 fourths and multiplying the top and bottom by 4. 
right? Then you'd have um, uh, two fourths multiplied, so you have eight sixteenths. Is that still equal ratio? Yeah. So let's multiply by cosine over cosine. So what happens now is now I get a negative sine of x cosine of x divided by, when I apply this cosine to the top, I, I distribute it properly to this, and I'm left with cosine of x minus, now these cosines are going to divide out to 1, minus sine of x. And you're saying, oh, good, you got it. Close. Because, yes, we have, um, well, first of all, this is a negative sine of x times cosine of x. And this is sine of x minus cosine of x, right? It's not the same. So what we can do is how about let's factor out a negative 1 on the bottom. If I factor out a negative 1, so I pull out, I divide both terms by negative 1. What that's going to leave me now is now a negative cosine plus sine of x. And therefore, my negatives on the top and the bottom, if I factor out the negative on the top, therefore my negatives are now going to, cancel, are going to cancel each other out. And therefore, I'm left with this equals a now positive sine of x, cosine of x, divided by sine of x minus cosine of x, which, of course, is equal to our right side. <laughs>